So it can be none other than the naked vet himself, Julian Norton. Ah! <laughs> and you put the clothes on. <laughs> I have, yes, but bizarrely, this time last week, I was doing another podcast with um, some people who are now friends from BBC Radio Sheffield. Uh, and they have their own podcast, which is called The Naked Podcast. And the guests <laughs> are all naked. Oh and they said to me, um, would I like to do it? So I thought, well, this sounds quite funny. So we had <laughs> exactly the same as we're ch chatting now, except I was sitting pretty much here with, without any clothes on at all. Oh and I was thinking, hey, now, which podcast is it today? Is it the <laughs> Evelyn Glenny podcast or is it the Naked one? But you, you <laughs> see, I got the right one today. So uh, Well, I, I don't <laughs> mind. However you want to turn up is fine by me. I've seen all sorts. <laughs> and actually, you know, being a farmer's daughter myself, I remember, you know, the various vets coming to the farm and, and sorting things mm -hmm. out. And, and yes, they were, you know, they often had to strip down, you know, whilst an arm was up the, the backside of a, a sheep or a cow or something. So it was yeah. quite a normal sight. Yeah, it's a strange thing. People often say, why, why do we do it? It's not out of exhibitionism at all, but <laughs> practically um, it saves getting a shirt ruined, even if you've got protective um, yeah. equipment on the, 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 that part of the shirt gets ruined with, Absolutely. And you can also, if you imagine your sleeve builder, you, you can, with no top on, you can go that much further inside. Yes, so yes. So there is a practical reason as, as much as, um, uh, as much as a, um, you know, a, an aesthetic uh, reason. Yeah. <laughs> they loved it. The first, the first everything that we filmed and we started doing the Oxford was, um, was me and to take my top off and I thought, what am I going to do here? And my decision was quickly made, just be normal, Julian, just be normal. Um, <laughs> and, and I did, and, and the rest kind of went from there, really. Amazing, because I remember the vets wearing a great long, almost like a, a rubber glove, but it was right up to their, their shoulder almost, you know. Yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. yeah we yeah. still use those. Certainly, if you're uh, pregnancy testing cows, for example, then, then the, you do rectal examinations, and then a, a glove is essential yeah. if you keep clean yeah. fingernail. I mean, why do you think, though, since all creatures great and small, there, there's been this real continued interest in, you know, following the, 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 a day in the life of a vet? You know, it, it just seems an amazing thing. And surely it must be a huge educational tool, not only for those who are, you know, following um, the footsteps of being a vet, but also for perhaps our youngsters who may not know, you know, where milk comes from, where eggs come from, where, you know, bacon comes from and so on. You, you know what I mean? It, it, it just seems a real fascination. Yeah, I mean, definitely um, there is a fascination. You know, people love animals and I think particularly, you know, in, in Britain, there's a very strong affinity with, with animals of all types. Um, and that's always something that's captivated people's imagination. I think, you know, vets, it's kind of wholesome work, isn't it? It's making animals better, it's bringing life into the world. And, and that's really life affirming, almost literally life kind of creating and life affirming. And at times mm. such as we're in now, that seems to be something that's really important. Um, yeah. you know, and it's very varied what we do as vets is today have been operating all morning. But yesterday I was looking at cows, tomorrow it's sheep. It, yeah. Monday was pigs, big woolly hairy pigs. So literally every day is different, um, which is something that brings quite a richness to to our job. Um, yeah. But yeah, people do seem fascinated, in, incredibly so. When I look on Channel Five on a Tuesday night, and it's still us there, um, <laughs> we're getting people watching. It's amazing. But it, I, one of the things I've really loved is, as you say, educating people in a pretty gentle way. It's not. A documentary it's it's you know the I like I would ideally like to be a little bit more informative and have more um, you know more not science but more sort of um, facts in the program but it's an entertainment program and, and we can get a lot of, of information across like I say these days a lot of people yeah. there is a big disconnect between the food that we eat and the milk and where mm. it comes from. so if we can bring that together then it's mm. definitely and I think also our relationship with animals, you know, of all descriptions is, is just so, it, it's so important to us, you know, as human beings, we, we do like 
pets of one sort or another. And, and I think that we, we often care more for our pets sometimes than, than people. You know, there seems to be an affinity um, between a vet and an animal, an owner and an animal. You know, I took Sophie, my cat, to the local vet just, just you know, a few weeks ago. And, and honestly, the care that was taken over this, this old cat, you know, and then I go to the doctor or something and it said, well, pull yourself together and you'll be fine, you know, in a day or so. And, and uh, so the empathy seems to be much greater. And I think that when you're watching a program like the Yorkshire Vet or, or anything like that, it's it's tapping into the emotion of the the owner as well as the expertise of the vet as well as the environment as well as just you know what that might mean financially to uh, mm. a, a particular situation if it's a farmer or something like that what does it mean to lose uh, a sheep or a or a cow or something you know it all has an impact really and I think you know it's really interesting to tap into those elements. Yeah, I mean, when we first started making the, the Yorkshire Vet, we thought it would be six episodes, that would be it, we'd have a bit of fun um, mm. on a Tuesday night and, and then life would get back to normal. But, and it was because, you know, we didn't see the longevity. I thought, you know, once we've had a carving and then a lambing and then a dog that's, you know, vomiting or whatever, yep. that, that's it, we've done that. But then I quite quickly realised that behind every animal there was a, a human and, and it was mm. actually the human element that was the thing that was uh, of interest. You know, you can look at the, you know, the, 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 the dog or the cat or the cow and that's interesting and cute and, you know, we can make that connection for sure. But it's actually the, the person behind the animal and the emotional connection between the two. And, and, mm. um, and that's really, I think, what drives the success of the programme. It's the... Um, mm. It's the strength of that bond. I'm sitting here now talking to you and at my feet. I don't know whether you can see if I go like that. My little dog. Oh, oh, yeah. look at that. Oh, definitely <laughs> so, wanting attention right now. She is, yeah. Beautiful. She, good at, it, it's, it's that sort of <laughs> unconditional, unconditional, unswerving love, really, that, that animals give us. And, That's true. You know, she, she never gets fed up with me, she never yeah. thinks of oh, what a pillar, you know, she <laughs> um, never answers back, you know, she's, there's an un, unconditional love um, yeah. that, that our animals uh, have with us and, and that's pretty special I think, isn't it? Yeah, it is really and I think one of the other things I've absolutely loved in uh, the Yorkshire Vet is, is the humour. You know, there's a kind of dry humour that, that feeds through everything and it puts things in perspective because I suppose if you're dealing with just so many situations, you know, good and maybe not so good. And, and but yet that thread of, of uh, just hanging on to the real humour is, is really important without belittling anything. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've always f f found animals to be, you know, to be amusing. They do funny things. They look often hilarious even uh, even just like I say my dog here she's oh you know, look <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of, of humor that com comes with uh, with animals and you can't tell them what to do you can't predict what they're going to do often um, <laughs> and it, it just makes you smile without even trying to be funny and then of course there are some, some genuinely hilarious things that happen um, especially in the context of, of um, of, of veterinary work you know there's there's lots of bodily fluids that go in the wrong place at the wrong time and there's animals that escape and and um yeah endless yeah. really